Well, the days are growing shorter and we're starting to see frost on the ground in the morning. Winter is certainly right around the corner, but that's not going to stop life in the garden. Even on the coldest days of winter, we still find things blooming in our gardens. Today we're going to take a look at some plants that will add color to the landscape and other interests during the winter months. Well, we certainly couldn't talk about winter flowers without mentioning the hellebore. Uh, there's a group of several species in the genus Helleborus, and these are plants uh, evergreen. They have this nice, dark, thick foliage that'll stay all winter long. The foliage usually mounds up to about, well, they're, depending on the species, 18 inches, and some of the larger ones can grow up to three feet even. Uh, another name for hellebore is the Lenten rose, and that's because some of the species will start to bloom around Christmas time. Uh, the plants have nodding flowers that they'll send up, and the colors are going to range from greens to white, pink, and even plum. And the flowers can be about two inches up to four, depending on your species. Sometimes you'll find little seedlings come up underneath your hellebores and you could just move these and spread them to other areas in your garden. This is a great plant for winter interest and one of those unusual plants that's going to give us flowers in the dead of winter. Another evergreen herb that we have is Arum Italicum, uh, the Italian Arum, also called Italian Lords and Ladies. This is sort of an unusual plant. Uh, it's perennial, but it goes dormant during the summer, and then it'll send up these uh, arrowhead-shaped leaves in the fall, and the leaves will stay green all winter long. So it's gonna add a lot of color to otherwise uh, dry, dark areas. Um, the leaves also have, the veins are lighter, and sometimes they're a little silvery, and here we're kind of yellow on this uh, plant. Um, but that adds just a little extra interest to the plant. Now this plant also has um, a beautiful flower that's sent up in the spring. It looks a little like, uh, if you're familiar with Jack in the Pulpit um, or Callas. And um, the, when the flower fades, it's followed by a cluster of bright red fruit. So it's a really attractive uh, plant from fall through the spring and then it'll go dormant. Now all parts of this plant are poisonous, so if you have young children or pets, it might not be the best choice, but otherwise it makes a beautiful addition to your woodland garden. Snow. Several shrubs that add color to the landscape with their colorful stems. One of these is this Oklahoma proven plant, uh, Caria japonica, or Japanese Caria. It's also called the Japanese yellow rose sometimes. Um, it's in the rose family and the flowers are, um, they clearly resemble those of a, a shrub rose. Um, but in the winter time, what we find of interest are the stems, the plant, the leaves are gonna fall from the plant and we're gonna leave behind these zigzagging stems and they're gonna be a bright Kelly green color and really add just a nice clump of color in your landscape. The plant will um, mound to about three to five feet. So you can imagine uh, just these twisting, zigzagging stems in, in green. When it comes to stem color, perhaps the dogwoods really steal the show. There are several dogwoods, uh, all in the genus Cornus, that have colorful stems during the winter. One of these is the red osier dogwood, Cornus stolonifera. Now right now the stems are just starting to get red, um, but in the winter time they're going to be just extremely red, very bright color, um, and really adds a great interest. It looks wonderful against uh, an evergreen backdrop where they really stand out, or in the more northern areas they're just fabulous when you have these red stems coming out of the snow. There's also a yellow twig dogwood, also Cornus stolonifera, that has bright yellow stems throughout the winter. Another evergreen that will add a lot of life to the winter landscape is this Nandina domestica, also called heavenly bamboo, though it's not actually a bamboo, it's in the barberry family. Um, this plant has a lot of great features, making it an ideal uh, landscape plant. The foliage 
is evergreen, but it also has a wonderful fall color. It turns to a red and bronzy color in the fall, and uh, it's somewhat unusual to find an evergreen that also provides fall color. So it's really a unique plant. Uh, Nandina also will, as it matures, produce clusters of flowers and fruits that hang on in the winter, so adding to the, the interest that it provides. Um, there are dwarf varieties and more compact varieties, so it's a really versatile plant that can, you can use just about anywhere in the landscape. Uh, some of them do well in the shade, tolerate the sun, so an excellent plant to add interest year-round with our fall foliage and our berries. Here's a native shrub that produces fantastic purple berries. This is the beauty berry, Calicarpa americana. It's a deciduous shrub, and what it provides are these beautiful purple berries. Right now, they're a little yellow. They're gonna start coloring up and turn a really vibrant purple color. Here's a tree with really fabulous bark. This is the lace bark elm, Ulmus parvifolia, and uh, the bark reminds me a bit of a, a puzzle with pieces missing. The bark exfoliates or peels off the tree and leaving a mottled pattern of grays and browns, even orange and sometimes green in the spring. So there's really beautiful bark for the winter. Uh, the tree grows to a mature size of about 40 to 50 feet and it has a rounded crown of these dark glossy green leaves. In the fall the leaves might turn uh, yellow to purple. This is a really uh, adaptable tree, can tolerate a wide range of soil conditions and is also fairly tolerant of Dutch elm species. One last way of adding wintress to your landscape is with plants that have form and structure during the winter months. Uh, many of us are familiar with this plant. This is Harry Lauder's walking stick, Coralus avalana. This is an unusual plant with an even more unusual name. Uh, apparently it's named for a Scottish comedian who performed using a crooked branch for a cane. So a little bit of lore for you there. But what it's most known for are these corkscrewing, twisting branches. And it's really best viewed in the winter after all the leaves have fallen off. And we are losing most of our leaves now, so you can really start to see this structure. Um, it's used as a specimen plant and really just adds a great deal of visual interest to the landscape. Now finally, when we leave our grasses uncut, they add a lot of flair to the winter landscape. Their tops sway in the wind, and even though their foliage browns up, it remains intact and adds structure and form when a lot of our other perennials have died back to the ground. This is Chasmanthium latifolium, uh, sea oats, or wild oats, and these sort of flattened um, seed heads will hang on to the stems all winter and sway in the wind. Another great grass is our Oklahoma Proven Purple Fountain Grass, Cetaceum purpureum, which will also add a lot of structure during the winter. So if your landscape is looking rather bleak this winter, you might want to consider ways that you can liven it up using winter flowering plants or uh, evergreen foliage, as well as plants with unusual bark, berries, and structure. Thank you.